Hello, this is Damian Capps, Chair of the DeFine Project Management Committee and Director of Library Technology at Villanova University's Falvey Library. Uh, today sees the release of a new major version of DeFine, DeFine 10.0, and this video is going to talk about what's new and what's changed. We'll start by highlighting some new features and improvements, and then talk about some things that you may need to be aware of if you've deeply customized the code. As always, we try to make upgrades as painless as possible, but due to some pretty significant changes required to keep up with technological changes, there are definitely some things you'll want to be aware of uh, if your viewfind is heavily customized. So let's start with new features. Uh, first of all, the new release has two new themes in it, uh, which we're currently considering beta status, but as you'll learn soon, uh, they'll be elevating pretty quickly. Uh, these are the Bootstrap 5 and Sandal 5 themes, which are relatively equivalent to the historical Bootstrap 3 and Sandal themes. The main difference being that they use the latest release of the Bootstrap framework instead of the older version 3. Uh, this brings some improved security and accessibility features uh, to the interface, and this is a road we will be going farther down in future releases. Also, a significant change to the user interface is a more dynamic method of rendering search results so that as users interact uh, with the results, the full page doesn't have to reload, making things a little bit more responsive and speedy, though this new search rendering method can be disabled if you don't want it. We've also added support for persistent logins so there's uh, a configuration setting that can be used to turn on a remember me checkbox that will allow users to stay logged in across browser sessions if they so desire. We've added rate limiting functionality to help combat abusive behavior and out of control bots. Uh, so if you're having traffic problems in Viewfind, you now have some new options to combat those problems. We've added a feature called explain which can be turned on to enable pop-ups that explain solar relevance ranking calculations within search results. Uh, this can be useful if you have power users like uh, advanced librarians who want to fully understand why the search results are in the order they're in. Uh, it can be quite helpful for troubleshooting and it can make things a bit more readable than looking at solar's debug output directly. We've added support for on-screen virtual keyboards, which can be useful if you need users to search your collection using uh, character sets that aren't easily available on their native keyboards. We've added the ability to uh, use user input to filter facet lists in the facet pop-ups. So if you have a facet field with hundreds or thousands of values, uh, this makes it possible to narrow things down pretty quickly. We've added support for multi-page selection in favorites lists, meaning that if users are checking off records to perform bulk actions like removing favorites or emailing them, uh, the checkbox selections persist across pages of results, uh, making it a little bit easier to do larger bulk activities uh, and no longer restricting those bulk actions to a single page of results. Uh, we've also added a couple of new recommendation modules, consortial viewfind, which can be used to connect to the viewfind API of a third-party consortium. Uh, this is useful, for example, uh, if you are at a library which interacts with a consortium that uses reshare, a viewfind-based uh, index, for uh, interlibrary borrowing and lending. Uh, there's also the databases module, which can provide a list of databases that seem relevant to the search results. Uh, this can be driven either with the LibGuides API or through local configuration, depending on what you have available to you. Uh, we also have added a new specialized ILS driver called Composed, uh, which allows you to expose a single ILS driver interface by composing together methods from multiple classes. Uh, this isn't heavily used anywhere yet, but it may be useful for some special cases, such as if you want to provide most of your functionality through your ILS, but all want to provide some additional functionality from other systems. 
The release adds support for network error logging headers, uh, which can be turned on in content security policy.ini. Uh, this allows you to instruct your users web browsers to send error information to a server of your choice, which can be helpful for identifying problems out in the wild. Uh, we added support for displaying links to content that is bound together, the bound with system. It's currently only supported by the Folio ILS driver, but any ILS that supports the presentation of this data can be updated to take uh, advantage of this new mechanism. Uh, we've also added the ability to display lists of citations and citing works uh, in the Primo module, if you use that. Uh, we've added support for integrating with the Easy Proxy URL checker tool, uh, which can help determine which of your links need a proxy prefix and which do not, so that prefixes can be applied dynamically. Uh, we've added support for deeply searching within nested collections if you're using the hierarchical collections feature, though this does require uh, some additional indexing, which I'll talk about later. And finally, we have added a new content provider for tables of contents. Uh, in addition to all of those new features, we've also made a few improvements, uh, many of which are new configuration settings offering previously unavailable customization. Uh, one big one is that the user account menu that appears when the user is logged in and interacting with their account can now be customized through a new file called accountmenu.yaml. This can be used to add, remove, or reorganize the options in the menu. Uh, the record data formatter tool, which is used to format many of the uh, online displays of record data, is now configurable through an any file called recorddataformatter.ini. In the past, if you wanted to change record data formatter behavior, you had to edit code. But now many changes can be made simply through this configuration file. And in addition to making record data formatter more easily configurable, we added uh, some new options, uh, most notably the data method params option, uh, which can be used to send arguments to the method used to fetch data from your record drive. Uh, we've also added some new configurations related to pagination controls. It's now possible to display the pagination control in search results at the top as well as at the bottom of the results through the top paginator setting. Uh, we've also added some new spell checking uh, functionality. The solar system offers multiple spell checking methods, and in the past, we only supported index based spell checking. Uh, but now we've added the ability to turn on Solar's direct spell checker as an alternative if you want to try that. Uh, both spell checkers have different advantages and disadvantages. Uh, the main advantage of the direct spell checker is that it does not require the construction of a separate spell checking index in order to operate. Uh, we've added a new hidden sorting section to some of our configuration files, which can be used to make uh, certain sort options legal without actually showing them in the user interface sort dropdown. Uh, this is useful, for example, if you want to provide direct links to uh, results sorted in a particular way, but that sort isn't more generally useful to your users. Uh, we've also added some new functionality to our new item search. Uh, it can now be configured to sort its results differently than other uh, search result lists, for example, it might make sense for your new items to be sorted by uh, date of addition to the collection, which might not be a sort you want to expose in other places. And additionally, we've added the ability to pre-filter new items with facet values, which can be configured. And finally, the functionality that embeds schema.org metadata in the markup of record pages can now be turned off if you don't want it. Uh, some situations have been identified where this metadata is actually unhelpful for uh, search engine optimization purposes. So if you want to get rid of it, you can just turn it off with the include schema.org metadata setting. We've also made some significant improvements to internationalization and translation. Uh, one big thing is that the system now supports the ICU message formatter syntax for tokens, 
which means that you can uh, support advanced pluralization. Uh, so for languages that need to use different phrasing based on different numbers, uh, there's ways to conditionally spell this all out within the language file and have uh, the display appropriately applied. This is not currently being used very widely, but with the functionality in place, we can uh, begin to take advantage of it in future releases. It's also now possible to alias language strings for other language strings, uh, which can be useful when we want to have the ability to customize things individually, but by default, uh, we want them to have the same translation. This way we can set up aliases through a file called aliases.ini that lets the translation system know which values to use without requiring us to ask our translation team to translate the same text multiple times unnecessarily. Uh, we've also added support for translating the names of languages. So for example, uh, in the record view where we display the language of a work or in the facets where we list the facet by language values, all of those language names are now internationalized, whereas previously only the English versions of the names were displayed. Finally, we have a couple of new interface languages. Maori, which is a work in progress, but uh, significantly fleshed out in 10.0, and Mongolian, which was actually introduced in uh, release 9.1.1, but since it wasn't announced in the what's new in 9.1 video, I thought I'd mention it here. Uh, several ILS drivers have had minor improvements and updates. So if you use Folio, Koha REST, Sierra REST, or XCN SIP2, uh, you may have some new options available to check out in your any files, or at very least, things might work a little bit better. And that covers all of the new functionality. So now it's time to start talking about things that have changed. So first of all, as is often the case, we've made some dependency changes. We've raised the minimum PHP version requirement from 8.0 to 8.1, since the 8.0 version is no longer supported and should no longer be used. Uh, and 8.1 offers some nice new language features that have made some of our code less verbose. So it's been a, a pleasant update. Uh, additionally, we've upgraded Solar to version 9.5, just to keep up with developments over there. Uh, we strongly recommend that you do a full re-index when you upgrade, just to be sure that all of your data is formatted appropriately for the new version of Solar. But also because we've made some small changes to our Solar index. Uh, first of all, as I mentioned earlier, we have this new deep searching within collections functionality that can be turned on if things are indexed correctly. Uh, if you want to take advantage of this, uh, it will require some indexing setup. Uh, we recommend using a field called hierarchy all parents string multivalued, but it's configurable, so you could use a different name if you preferred. And more significant to the majority of users is the fact that we've made the URL field indexed uh, in Solar, whereas previously it was only stored. And what this means is just that you can now search for URLs in a way that you couldn't before, or for example, do a filter of URL colon star to bring back only records that have URLs associated with them. Uh, finally, we've uh, updated the language translation map for MARC records uh, so that the labels match the latest MARC standards. Uh, what we had in the past was a little bit out of date and some things had changed. And even though I said finally on that last bullet, there's actually one, uh, which is that the alphabetical browse handler and the related indexing scripts have been modernized and updated. Um, some parameters have changed. And so if you have a custom alpha browse index script, you might need to make some minor adjustments just to bring it up to date. Uh, we've also made some changes to our database schema. Um, biggest addition is a new table called login token, which is used for the persistent login functionality that was added in the release. Uh, but we've also changed the search table so that the user ID field defaults to null instead of zero. Uh, it was noticed that the user ID field was not set up in such a way that would allow it to be a foreign key to a uh, user. Uh, and while we haven't added a foreign key yet, we probably will in a future release. 
we're doing this in steps to make the upgrade process as painless as possible. Uh, but after this release, you'll find that uh, search rows that aren't associated with the user will have a null user ID instead of a user ID of zero, which honestly makes a lot more sense anyway. Uh, now let's talk about some changes impacting the user interface. Uh, the biggest thing, of course, is the evolution of themes. I already mentioned we're adding some new beta themes that bring Bootstrap 5 into the system. Uh, and just to talk a little more about the long-term strategy here, uh, in release 10.1, we are going to deprecate all of the Bootstrap 3-based themes, and we will make the Bootstrap 5-based themes uh, non-beta, they will be official. We just want to offer this beta period uh, in the 10.0 series of releases so that people have time to give us feedback and try things out. Um, but we don't want to take too long to get migrated fully to Bootstrap 5 uh, because Bootstrap 3 is quite out of date and maintaining all of these themes in parallel takes a lot of extra development effort. So by the time we get to release 11, Sandal 5 will become the default theme, and all of the Bootstrap 3 themes will be completely removed. Uh, so that means there's about a year now uh, where all of us can work on getting our local themes in sync with Bootstrap 5 instead of Bootstrap 3. But don't be too alarmed uh, because we've tried to make this as easy as we can. There are some tools for automatically converting templates. There are some backward compatibility layers to reduce the amount of change necessary. Uh, and we have a page in the wiki called Themes Based on Bootstrap 5 that has all the details of what needs to be changed. So I hope that uh, this grace period will allow everyone to be ready. And by the time we get to Viewfind 11, we can be happy to be on a modern version of Bootstrap. Uh, and we won't have spent too much time getting there. Some other uh, important user interface changes include the fact that our autocomplete functionality has been moved from the common JS file to the search box controls.js file, since that's a more appropriate place for it. And it's been fairly significantly refactored along the way. So if you've customized autocomplete stuff, you may need to make some adjustments there. Uh, we've also renamed, replaced, and consolidated some translation strings. Uh, so for example, the past days string uh, now uses the ICU message formatter syntax that I mentioned. This was our test case uh, when we introduced that functionality. Uh, there were some redundant strings that have been replaced with entries in aliases.ini to reduce duplication in the language files. Uh, there were some strings that had a underscore selected suffix that have been renamed to instead have a bulk prefix to get all of the bulk related text grouped together. And we did some work to normalize and clarify the language around favorites. So there used to be strings called favorites, my favorites, and your favorites that have all been replaced with default list title and saved items. Uh, because essentially the two uses for these various strings were either to establish the name of the user's default list and to display menu items linking to saved items. Uh, so now if you want to customize the default list title, you can do that independently of the labeling in the user interface. Uh, some other changes include uh, simplification and refactoring of the search tabs view helper. So in the relatively unlikely case you've customized that, a little work may be needed. Uh, we've also changed the constructor signature of the proxy URL view helper to add that uh, easy proxy prefix check uh, functionality. Uh, we've added a new view helper called search settings, which helps to simplify template logic related to displaying uh, cart and bulk action checkboxes. So again, if you've customized templates related to that, you might be able to simplify. Uh, and code related to the display of both collection hierarchies and hierarchical facets has been significantly revised and simplified to get rid of the JS tree library, which is showing its age, uh, and instead use just native HTML and CSS. So if you've customized hierarchies, you'll likely need to do a little work to get up to date with this, but it makes everything a lot cleaner and more efficient. So I think you'll find it's worth the effort. 
Uh, we've also changed some of the methods in the content controller to make them more flexible. Uh, this is another thing that you're unlikely to have customized, but if you did, take a look at it. Uh, we've changed the way that Viewfind handles uh, JavaScript events. It now uses stored functions instead of um, custom events, and the event names have been revised for clarity. So if you've got any JavaScript code using custom events that interface with the Viewfind code, uh, that will need to be adjusted. The uh, init results script function in CommonJS has been replaced by a new results init event. Uh, so now where we used to have one function that did a whole lot of things, we instead have event handlers in a variety of places, which uh, makes the separation of code considerably clearer. But if you need to hook custom JavaScript when search results are initialized, uh, you'll need to do that in a new way. Uh, we've also made uh, a minor CSS change for, co for forward compatibility with Bootstrap 5. Uh, we used to have a class called Off Canvas. It's been renamed to Viewfind Off Canvas so it doesn't conflict with Bootstrap. And finally, on the user interface front, uh, we used to have a lot of submit input named submit, but this caused some problems by overriding the JavaScript submit function in an unexpected way. And so all of these inputs have been renamed to submit button. So if you have either JavaScript or server-side code that relies on the name submit, adjustments may be needed. Uh, but the core code has been built in a fairly backward compatible way. So it shouldn't break if you happen to still have any inputs named submit floating around. So uh, in addition, to the big changes on the front end, the other most dramatic change in Viewfind 10 uh, relates to database architecture. So uh, as we've actually been discussing for a couple of years now, uh, the Laminas DB library that we use for our database abstraction layer has been deprecated, and we really need to move to something that's going to be better supported going forward. However, it's such a big job to change this that we decided that rather than doing the full job of switching to a different library, uh, we would focus in release 10 on refactoring the code to just make that job easier uh, and to prepare people for the shape that the code is going to take once the migration is done. Uh, and this, this is happening in part because Viewfind's database code is quite old it maybe wasn't as well designed as it could have been. And so this need was really also an opportunity to clean up some things that needed cleaning up. So as we prepare for the future change, we're trying to separate out low level database access code from higher level business logic, uh, make some confusing things less confusing and improve a lot of names, just so that all of the code that touches the database is in more logical places, has more logical names, and is generally easier to understand. But this, of course, is a little bit disruptive. So let's talk about the strategy that we are taking. Uh, first of all, right now, uh, every row in the database or every row in a uh, result set is represented by a class in the viewfind db row namespace. And these are Laminas row gateways. Um, but what we've done in release 10 is introduced entity interfaces in the viewfind db entity namespace. These basically just define getters and setters for all of the values that these rows can contain. And all of the existing row classes have been updated to implement these entity interfaces. So they've had a lot of added getters and setters. Uh, one of the confusing things about Laminas row gateways is that they could be accessed using either object or array syntax. And this led to a lot of inconsistent code because different uh, areas of viewfind just use different syntax without a lot of rhyme or reason. So the code has now all been refreshed to use the getters and setters in the entity interfaces, making things a lot more predictable uh, and allowing us to take advantage of things like you know, IDEs suggesting methods when you're writing code. Uh, so this should make things a lot more consistent. And with these interfaces in place, when we change things in the future, 
as long as our new abstraction layer can be made to implement the entity interfaces, most of the high-level code never needs to change again. On a similar note, uh, a lot of our business logic related to the database is found in the viewfind DB table namespace, uh, which contains Laminas table gateway classes. But instead, we've now introduced a new family of viewfind DB service classes to encapsulate a uh, logic that does direct reads and writes to the database. But we've done more than just move all of the table code into service code, because as I mentioned, we've also tried to separate low level code from higher level business logic. So the database service classes are really just about reading things, writing things from the database and higher level logic has been moved into higher level service classes like the favorite service, the rating service, and the tag service. So again, this makes future migrations a lot easier because the high level logic all just uses the service classes to do a database interaction. And then the service classes encapsulate the actual database interactions. So if in the future we need to change abstraction layers again, it is only the service classes that need to be rewritten. Everything higher level uh, can just stay as it is. Uh, some changes we made along with this, just to improve separation of concerns and cleanliness of code, uh, include removing database access from record drivers. Uh, our record drivers in past releases did too many things. They not only provided an abstraction to records, but they also had a lot of business logic involving reads and writes to the database. And now all of those uh, methods have been deprecated and that functionality has been moved outside either to the record view helper for things that require us to retrieve data and display it in views or to the service classes if it has to do with writing data to the database. This just means record drivers do only one job instead of many jobs, makes things more clear. Uh, obviously, with all of this code getting moved around, we've had to change a lot of constructors and factories and method signatures to use these new entity interfaces and services instead of the old rows and tables. Um, in 10.0, we tried to make this as non-disruptive as possible. So um, a lot of things are going to still work because, of course, the row classes implement the entity interfaces we didn't go too crazy adding type hints everywhere. Uh, a lot of the changes are just in comments. Um, it's not that you won't have to make any changes if you have custom database related code, but we tried not to do more change than was strictly necessary. Um, and we may take this a little further in release 11, but that's for the future. Uh, and of course, as I already hinted, a lot of methods have been deprecated particularly not just the record driver methods I already talked about, but also uh, a lot of the Laminas row gateway methods we added that had complex business logic. All of that has been moved into services because we want the uh, entity interfaces to just be about representing data models. The business logic needs to live somewhere else. This all improves our uh, conformance to the, the model view controller architecture. All right, those are the biggest things. But now there are lots of small things that might uh, impact some of you. So please bear with me as I go through the rest of them. Uh, a number of changes impact authentication. Uh, one big thing is that historically we've had a method called is logged in in a variety of places um, that would return either an object representing the logged in user or false if no one was logged in. Uh, and this is a really good use of a method named is logged in, which implies a Boolean value. So we decided to deprecate that and replace it with multiple methods that can be used in the most appropriate contexts. So if you just want a quick check to see if somebody is logged in, you should now use get identity, which will uh, return an object from the role-based access control system if the user is logged in or null if they are not. Or you can use get user object if you want access to the full viewfind user entity interface object. Uh, and again, this will also return null if no one is logged in. 
as this bullet says. Uh, some other things of note, uh, code related to encryption of passwords has been moved to the ILS Authenticator class just to better centralize that work. Uh, the post-logging redirect system, which remembers where you were trying to go before you logged in and then sends you there after you've logged in, uh, has been made a little bit more reliable. There were some edge cases where it didn't always work correctly, uh, but changing this required us to change some controller logic so previously, there was a method in the abstract base controller called get follow up URL, uh, but that has been replaced by a new get and clear follow up URL method. So if you're using get follow up URL in any of your custom code, which is unlikely, uh, changes will be necessary. Uh, finally, on the authentication front, uh, the viewfind auth manager class and all of its plugins have had constructor method signature changes. Uh, both to support persistent logins and also to accommodate the database refactoring. Since all of these classes interact heavily with user objects, and now they are all using the uh, user entity interface instead of direct access to Laminas DB gateways. Uh, we've made a couple of changes to our integrations with third-party services. Uh, if you're a Primo Central user, uh, you are strongly encouraged to go to primo.ini and change your API setting from legacy to REST in order to take advantage of the newer and more reliable API. But we couldn't change the default value here because the authentication settings are different. So you'll have to set things up a little bit differently. But it shouldn't be too hard to do, uh, and it will give you better results. Uh, also, in the Folio ILS driver, the format holding item method has had uh, some small changes to accommodate uh, some of the improvements to the driver. So if you've customized that method in a local subclass, take a look at the upstream code and make sure that you're still correctly aligned with it. And now into the various miscellaneous other changes. Uh, content security support has been updated to reflect changes to that standard. Uh, the report to setting now actually has a different meaning than it used to because of the way CSPs have evolved. So if you were using that setting in contentsecuritypolicy.ini, you're going to have to make changes to ensure that policy violations are correctly reported. The uh, viewfind search query adapter and related minification and deminification logic for searches has been significantly refactored to make it easier to customize. Since it was previously hard to customize, you probably don't have custom code that needs to be adjusted. Uh, but if you did something crazy to customize things, maybe you could redo it in a simpler way. Uh, the search results objects may now return a negative one from the get result total method, which indicates that the total number of results cannot be determined. Uh, so if you have custom templates or logic that is using get result total, you may need to add a special case to accommodate this, uh, which was added so that search backends that are unable to report totals can still be supported. Uh, we now use the account capabilities class to check whether library cards are supported. Uh, this change was made as part of the work to remove business logic from the user row class for the database refactoring. Uh, the cart controller and my research controller constructors have been changed to reduce uh, their direct dependency on the service locator. Uh, code related to record versions has been simplified for consistency and maintainability. So if you've customized that, uh, you may find that you need to make some changes. Uh, a lot of this had to do with removing some uh, functionality that was intended to make outdated links continue to work even after records have been deleted from the index. Uh, but we made the determination that the complexity of that outweighed the value. So uh, this may also mean that if you've deleted records and people have linked to versions lists related to those records, that those links are going to stop working. But the likelihood that anyone has saved such a link is pretty slim. So I think it's a, a worthwhile sacrifice for clarity of code. Uh, we also discovered that the proxy manager library, which we relied on for some of our factories to help reduce circular dependencies, is no longer being maintained. 
Uh, and so we rewrote our code to no longer depend upon it, but that did impact a few constructor signatures for some of our more complex services. The uh, viewfind search combined options class, uh, which is used for combined search, uh, now contains some logic that was previously part of the combined controller. Uh, this puts code in a more logical location that helps with customization, uh, but refactoring this stuff uh, did require us to change the constructor signature for that class. Uh, similarly, the init from record driver method of the solar collection params class has changed uh, to support some refactoring. The constructor of the viewfind exception off email not verified class now requires a user entity interface object. This is the exception that's thrown to report that a user has not yet verified their email, and it now carries information about the user along with it to make the related code easier to manage. Uh, the signature of the Solar Query Builder Interfaces build um, method has been expanded so that the query can take more factors into consideration. So if you have a custom query builder, uh, you might need to adjust your build method to match, and you might have some new things you could take account of as you build your query. Uh, we've also revised the way the AJAX controller handles errors. Uh, previously, it swallowed a lot of things, which made it possible for minor bugs to get missed. But now when you're in development mode, uh, warnings and notices are actually going to cause failures, which will hopefully uh, allow us to catch problems more, more quickly rather than letting them slip through for longer periods of time. The uh, bootstrapper init locale and time zone method has been renamed to simply init time zone because we no longer need to initialize locales. Uh, some constructor type hints have been broadened to use the laminat cache storage storage interface instead of the abstract adapter, uh, which means that uh, you can use different implementations of the interface that come from places other than the abstract storage adapter. Uh, the constructor signature of the OAuth2 controller has been adjusted to remove the authorization service object, which was being passed in previously, but never actually used. All right, we're nearly done. All that's left is to talk about things that have been deprecated or removed. So the viewfind tags class has been renamed viewfind tags tag service for consistency with other service classes. Um, the viewfind search backend EDS search request model ends with method has been removed in favor of the native string ends with function that PHP now provides. Uh, this, this method was created before that function existed, but we don't need it now. Uh, viewfind search base options supports first last navigation has been deprecated in favor of the easier to understand record first last navigation enabled. Uh, the CSP nonce view helper has been deprecated in favor of the get nonce method in the CSP view helper. Uh, it doesn't seem like a good reason to have two different view helpers related to content security policies, so we've consolidated them. Uh, the keyboard shortcuts JavaScript function in CommonJS has been removed. Uh, this was originally intended to add some keyboard shortcuts for search results, uh, but it had grown non-functional due to changes in markup. Uh, so it didn't work correctly, and it seemed to have some accessibility problems, so we simply removed it. Uh, we could certainly reintroduce something like this in the future if there is a demand for it. And finally, all the code that was deprecated in the 9.x series of releases has now been fully removed. I know that's a lot, and uh, in some cases it may be some work to get things upgraded, so I just wanted to remind everyone uh, that there is a video available on the Viewfind Wiki called Upgrading with Git, which shows the process that I use for upgrading Viewfind, which helps to automate at least some parts of the process. Uh, there's also a blog post that you can read, uh, which talks about the process as well. Uh, I will post these slides in the same place where this video is posted, so you can click these links if you need them. Beyond that, 
Uh, you can, of course, reach out to me anytime. My email is damian.katz at villanova.edu, or you can find me at, at Damian Katz on the Viewfind Slack. Uh, I'm always happy to discuss upgrades, answer questions, help troubleshoot problems. Uh, as I say, upgrading can be a pain, but we try to make it as painless as we can. Uh, and the community is here to help if you need it. I hope you enjoyed Viewfind 10. Thanks for taking the time to listen to me ramble about it. And I'll see you at the next release.